Hi, everyone. I'm Michael Roth. I'm from AMD, and I'm here to provide a development status update on uh, SEV SMP support for Linux. Uh, so a quick overview of SEV SMP and the, the features that it adds. Uh, this was introduced with the Zen 3 CPU architecture. Uh, previously, uh, before SEV SMP, we had uh, SEV, Secure Encrypted Virtualization, which provided a uh, uh, guest data conf confidentiality through uh, encrypted guest memory. And uh, we also had uh, SEV ES, which uh, extended guest, uh, guest data confidentiality to, uh, by encrypting uh, the uh, vCPU register state. And uh, with SEV SMP, we build on SEV and SEV ES to also provide uh, guest data integrity, and that's through the uh, secure nested paging feature. Uh, which is the uh, the namesake of SEV SMP, but there's also some additional security features that fall under the uh, SMP umbrella. There's uh, uh, these mostly uh, relate to uh, control flow security, so things like uh, CPU ID security. Um, so w when you issue uh, CPU ID instructions in the guest, those are generally emulated by the hypervisor, and uh, in some cases, uh, uh, guest code might rely on well-defined behavior based on how hardware implements things like CPU ID leaves. But uh, in an uh, uh, emulated context, some of those uh, assumptions could potentially be broken. So uh, there's some features to guard against that uh, with, uh, in the case of CPU ID and uh, also similarly with uh, interrupt security and secure TSE. Uh, so here's a quick overview of where we're at with the overall upstreaming status of these features. Uh, one big milestone that we recently hit was the guest SMP support for both the, uh, the, the main secure nested paging feature as well as uh, CPU ID security uh, are upstream as of uh, kernel 5.19. And uh, the uh, SMP security feature doesn't rely on any hypervisor support, so uh, technically that's, that's done as well. But uh, the core focus at the moment is on the uh, secure nested paging hypervisor support. Uh, the latest patch set was version 6, and we'll be following that up with uh, version 7 uh, fairly soon. And uh, most of this talk will sort of center around uh, where we're at with uh, implementing that and uh, some of the, the recent developments upstream uh, related to, to getting that, that, that code merged. Uh, so before we get into how secure nested paging works, just a quick overview of how regular nested paging works. Uh, so with uh, regular nested paging, we have a guest page table that maps the guest virtual address to a uh, guest physical address, and a nested page table, which then takes that guest physical address and maps it to a host physical address. And in the case of uh, SEV and SEV ES, there's a, a C bit that can be set in the guest page table to um, denote whether or not that uh, guest physical address should be treated as a, a private page or a shared page. And in the case of private pages, um, we use encryption to provide uh, data confidentiality um, on access to the accesses to that table. So whenever the guest tries to write to uh, a GPA with uh, the C bit set, the uh, memory controller will encrypt that data using the guest's encryption key. And then uh, same for when uh, we read from, the, from that uh, encrypted uh, GPA. So we, um, that mechanism for controlling whether or not a page is shared or private sort of lives inside the guest page table as far as the host, uh, the, the nested page table and accesses to the host memory. Uh, it pretty much appears just like regular guest memory, except if the host tries to, to write to that, um, it's just going to end up writing garbage because when the guest reads it, in the case of a, a private page, it's just going to, it's going to try to decrypt it using its uh, encryption key and then it'll um, end up reading uh, garbage because it wasn't originally written using the, the guest's um, encryption key. Uh, so that provides data confidentiality because you can't get the contents of what's in the, uh, those guest pages due to encryption, but you're still susceptible to things like remap and replay attacks because since the host still has full control over the, the nested page table, uh, 
and host memory. It can do things like uh, potentially save an, an old copy of a particular guest page. And even though it's encrypted, maybe due to the time of boot that that page was saved off, we might, uh, you know, an attacker might have a good idea of what's supposed to be in that page. So if he then tries to uh, write that page back into the guest uh, by writing directly to the host memory later, uh, potentially he could try to uh, manipulate the guest in that way, or he could just straight up write into the host memory to corrupt the guest data, and um, the guest won't be aware. Um, but you know, in, in reality, uh, there's there's actually some mitigations in place that guard against most of the more common sorts of attacks of that sort. But with uh, enough experimentation, you could potentially get the guest to do something that it's not supposed to. So that's where the um, secure nested paging comes into play. So in the case of secure nested paging, uh, we still have the guest page table that maps the GBA to the GPA, and then the nested page table that maps the GPA to an HPA. But now there's also a reverse map table, which maps the host physical address back to the guest physical address, and also provides uh, some additional uh, metadata that could be used for uh, to provide some additional integrity checks on accesses to uh, that, that uh, page in, in the host physical memory. Uh, so uh, to get a better idea of how this works, let's take a closer look at uh, the, the data that's actually in those RMP entries. So for instance, um, in this case, uh, guest A uh, has a, a, a private page at GPA 2000H, and the nested page table maps that uh, guest physical address to the host physical address 7000H. And oh, I just realized my cursor doesn't show up there. Um, and so, uh, and then 7000H, the host physical address then has a, a corresponding entry in the RMP table with some additional metadata uh, that tells the uh, that the hardware uses to enforce certain uh, restrictions on, on, on accesses to that page. So here you have the assigned bit set, which uh, tells the hardware that um, host physical address 7000 is assigned to a guest with uh, ACID2 in this case, and the uh, guest physical address that it should be mapped to in the nested page table uh, by the nested page table is uh, 2000H. And one important um, Detail here is the validated bit. Um, so when, when the host sets up the, uh, the uh, RMP table entries for the guest, um, the host can use this uh, RMP update instruction that um, you know, can, can pretty much manipulate all of the entries in this table, but the real security comes from the fact that it can't set the validated bit in that table. So in order for the validated bit to be set, the guest, prior to using the page, has to issue a p-validate instruction. And um, when it issues that p-validate instruction, that's when the validated bit gets set. And then from that point forward, if the host tries to manipulate the RMP table so that it can, um, so, so it can manipulate the guest data, the validated bit will be unset. And then if the guest tries to access that address later on, it'll get a um, uh, virtual communication, uh, uh, virtual communication exception, a uh, pound VC, and uh, generally the guest will um, terminate itself in that case. Uh, so let's take a closer look at what uh, is involved in implementing this uh, secure nested page table support in KVM. Uh, one thing we need to do is we need to set up the uh, the memory that the hardware will use to store those RMP entries. Uh, another thing is when the guest is um, uh, created and set up, we need to make sure that those pages are pinned. And there's actually uh, SEV and, and SEVS have a similar requirement in this regard because the uh, encryption algorithm that's, that's used to encrypt those pages is sort of tied to the, the, the physical address that uh, backs those pages. So, we actually already have a KVM IOCTL that's used in those cases to register those pages that might be used for uh, encrypted guest memory and also pin those. So in the case of SMP, we reuse that KVM IOCTL, but uh, we also need to uh, 
uh, add some additional handling to make sure that we update the RMP uh, entries uh, to correspond to the initial state of guest memory. So uh, when you initially boot a guest, uh, you'll have uh, the initial guest image, like the, the, the OVMF uh, ROM, and those will be stored in guest memory as, as uh, encrypted pages. So we need to make sure that we update the RMP entries to reflect that before uh, booting the guest. And then after booting the guest, the guest can potentially uh, issue page state changes in the form of GHCB requests to change the state of the page from shared to private or, or private to shared. So we need handling uh, in KVM to deal with that as well. Uh, another thing we need to deal with is the uh, RMP fault handling. Uh, that's sort of the mechanism that's used to enforce the restrictions that are placed on host memory accesses. Um, those can be surfaced uh, in the form of a host page fault in the case of uh, host threads that are trying to uh, write to uh, a particular host physical address. And then we also have uh, the analog for when a guest tries to access uh, guest physical addresses uh, if those accesses don't align with the, the state of the RMP, uh, the corresponding RMP entry, then uh, those will result in nested page faults, which um, we also need to add handling for. So let's take a closer look at the host page fault handling. Um, so in, in this particular case, we have uh, thread A, that's uh, a vCPU thread that's running in guest mode. Uh, we have the guest page table that maps uh, uh, a four kilobyte uh, GPA as, uh, as a shared page, and the nested page table maps that to um, uh, address 602,000H in, in host memory. And uh, we also have, in this case, thread B, which could be a, a user space thread, like the, the VMM process itself that's running the guest, or, the, um, or it could also be a, a kernel thread, and in this case, that thread has a huge page mapping that overlaps with that same address, 602,000H. And in this case, everything's fine because the uh, page in the, the guest page table uh, doesn't have the C bit set. Um, so it's, it's, it's just a shared page, so it's treated like any other host page. And there's no issue here, but if you attempt to, if you switch the page to a private page, uh, then you'll have problems uh, because in the case of uh, thread B being a user space thread, because that huge page mapping overlaps with the private page, if you try to write to any page within that, that two megabyte range, even if you're not overlapping with the, that particular private page, um, you'll still trigger an RMP fault because as far as the hardware is concerned, you're writing to that two megabyte region which contains a, a, a private guest page. Um, and in the case of user space, that's fairly easy to deal with. We just uh, split the uh, mapping in the, the user space page table. And then at that point, there's no overlap and uh, the process can continue executing. Uh, but in the case of a kernel access, uh, uh, for instance, if the kernel has a, a completely unrelated thread that's trying to access some subpage in that range, using the, uh, the kernel direct map, uh, because the direct map uh, uses two megabyte entries by default, uh, in that case, you'll get a host page fault for that kernel access. Uh, and uh, in that case, uh, you know, it, it's basically a, a host bug. There's no way to sort of dynamically split the uh, the, the host, uh, arm, the, 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 the direct map dynamically like we do in the user space case. Um, but we do have interfaces to split the direct map in advance. So that's, that's how things are currently implemented, or at least that's how things will be implemented in version seven. We, we use a similar approach in, in version six of the SMP hypervisor patches, but um, in, instead of directly splitting the direct map using like set memory 4K, uh, we actually unmap the private page from the direct map. And then that ends up splitting the direct map in this particular case, because if you remove one entry from the direct map, then you have to split it in order to, to remap all the other entries that you didn't remove. So 
in either case, we basically end up splitting the direct mat to avoid this, this scenario here. Um, and another situation we need to deal with is uh, in the case of uh, you know, just a, a, a normal 4K write. If you try to write to that particular page, then um, you know, you'll get an RMP fault because um, the hardware enforces that the host can't arbitrarily write uh, garbage to uh, private guest memory. And in the case of user space, if this situation happens, like the VMM tries to write to, uh, you know, tries to, to write to a page that the guest has flipped to a, a private state, then we'll basically just signal the process to, to, to terminate uh, using SIGBUS. Um, and currently in version six of the hypervisor patches, if the kernel tries to do the same thing, uh, we'll basically just uh, crash the, the host because that's considered a, a host bug. And um, you know, it's better to crash the host than to, 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 to silently let it, um, let it do this. But in version seven, uh, we'll likely be changing that behavior because there's a situation here where maybe uh, the, the kernel thread that's trying to access that page is uh, trying to access it for something like a KVM clock or a bird IO buffer where the host thinks it's supposed to be shared, but then the guest tries to maliciously switch it to a private page so that the next time the host tries to access it, it generates that, that page fault. And we don't want to crash the host in that case. So um, for version 7, we're exploring an approach where we just um, flip the page back to shared if the host thinks it's supposed to be a shared page. And if we do things that way, um, the guest, in the case of a malicious guest, if that ends up breaking things, that's OK, because uh, a malicious guest or, or a buggy guest, because a guest isn't supposed to be switching pages to private out from underneath the covers. So that's undefined behavior. It's OK if the guest breaks in that case. But we, we do need to watch out for the case where maybe the host does this in error. It flips the page to uh, a shared page because it thinks it's supposed to be shared, but it's actually a bug in the host. And if that happens, we don't want to silently um, corrupt the guest memory. But um, because of the way uh, SMP handles things, uh, if we flip the page to shared, and the guest isn't expecting it to be shared, it's expecting it to be private, we'll unset the validated bit in the RMP table. So the next time the guest tries to access that page, it'll see that that validated bit was unset, and then it'll get the, uh, the, uh, the, the pound VC exception so it can terminate itself. Uh, so that's, that's how we handle things for host page faults. Um, for uh, nested page faults, there's some similar checks in place, um, but things are a little bit different here. So in, in this situation, we have uh, thread A, which uh, has a uh, two megabyte mapping uh, that for, a, for a GPA 200,000H to 400,000H. And then the nested page table, in turn, uh, maps that as a huge page to host physical address 600,000H through 800,000H. And then we also, in the RMP table, uh, for the RMP entry corresponding to 600,000H, uh, we set a bit in the RMP entry that tells the hardware that uh, the data in that RMP entry should apply for that entire two megabyte range. So that helps speed up the RMP lookups uh, for, for the optimal case here. But in order for this to work, um, when the guest validates the, uh, that GPA range, it needs to issue the pvalidate instruction with the uh, huge page bit set to, uh, you know, to, to tell hardware that, that it does have it mapped as, as a two megabyte page. And if it does, then, then everything works fine here. But if the guest actually tries to uh, validate this that GPA range using anything other than the huge page, for instance, it tries to, to validate it as a 4K page, then, and, you know, because possibly it's just not an optimized guest or because it actually has that GPA mapped as a 4K page in its host page, in its guest page table instead of uh, a 2 meg page, then in that case, we'll get a nested page fault. And uh, to handle that, uh, the, uh, 
we need to split the nested page table mapping so that it no longer maps that any that GPA range to a huge page and instead maps it as individual 4K pages. And then we also need to issue a piece mash instruction to uh, uh, split this RMP, this, this two megabyte RMP entry into um, individual 4K RMP entries, at which point the guests can retry the, the p-validate instruction, and in this case, it'll it succeed. Um, and there's uh, another set of checks here with the C bit. Uh, if the guest uh, tries to do uh, an, an, an implicit page state change by, instead of issuing an, a, a GHCB request to tell the host that it wants a particular page to be shared or private, it might just update the C bit in its page table. And if the state of the C bit in the guest page table doesn't match the state of the page in the RMP table, then that'll also result in a nested page fault. And in that case, the nested page fault will have the RMP bit set as well as a bit to indicate what type of access the guest was trying to make. And to, to deal with that, we have some handling to um, update the, uh, the entry in the RMP table to match what, what the guest is expecting. And so that's, that's how things are sort of implemented for the um, uh, secure nested paging support uh, for the current version of the um, SMP hypervisor patches. And the handling there is, is, hasn't changed much since version 5. There, there are some changes that we're looking at for version 7, but uh, things are, are, are mostly sort of stable in, in how we have things implemented. But uh, there's a new development upstream that uh, we've been looking at. Um, and that's called uh, UPM, Unmapped Private Memory. And uh, UPM basically refers to some proposed kernel infrastructure that's uh, used to back confidential guests with pages that can't be accessed by user space. Um, and the uh, initial implementation of that UPM support is uh, Chao Ping's private mem slot patch set. So when I refer to UPM, I'm basically referring to the the changes introduced by, by that patch set. Um, and UPM has been uh, proposed by a number of different people for a number of different reasons. But uh, as I understand things, sort of the, the main driver for UPM is uh, Intel TDX, where um, in the case where user space tries to write to a uh, private guest page, um, you know, in our case, we just kill the guest. We, we get a, uh, a page fault, and um, we signal the process to uh, terminate. But in the case of uh, Intel TDX, that results in a machine check, uh, which would crash the host. So it's important in that case to have some infrastructure in place so that user space can't um, write to guest memory, uh, guest private memory. And uh, so we've been looking at how to leverage that for SMP. Um, and uh, there's also, I think, uh, a prototype that was uh, recently implemented for PKVM that, that makes use of it as well. Um, so uh, just a, a quick overview of, of what UPM, what, what the flow of things look like with UPM. Um, so with UPM, you uh, have this new private mem slot structure. Um, so you know, before getting into that, in the case of a normal mem slot structure, uh, if you have a, a nested page fault for a guest and you need to do a, a GPA to HPA lookup to figure out what host physical address to map into the nested page fault, into the nested page table to handle the nested page fault, uh, you take the GPA and you use that to basically index into the mem slot and um, figure out what HBA is supposed to back that GPA, and then you walk the VMM processes page table to get the host physical address that that corresponds to. And then that's what you uh, program into the nested page table. And that happens the same both for um, shared pages, like 2000H in this case, or for private pages, like 3000H. Uh, the, the handling is the same for either. But in the case of the private mem slot structure, uh, for 2000H, the shared page 
the handling is the same. But for 3000H, there's now this, uh, this, this X-ray structure that's used by the KVM MMU to check whether or not the um, GPA is supposed to be mapped to a normal page or a private page. And in the case of a private page, when we try to look up the corresponding uh, host physical address, we will use that GPA to get an offset into this special uh, memfd backend. And that memfd backend can then be used to get the host physical address to program into the uh, nested page table. And that special memfd backend has some, uh, some safeguards on it so that user space processes can't read or write to those pages. And they also can't use mmap to, to map them into the, uh, the process's address space. Uh, so, and you know, I mentioned the implicit conversions, uh, implicit page state changes earlier. Uh, this is sort of how things look like when we implement them with uh, UPM. So um, in this case, uh, you have uh, the GPA 3000H, which in the X-Array was originally mapped as a shared page, but in this case, the guest has flipped the C-bit on so that it's now uh, a, a private page. So when that happens, you get a nested page fault, and the KVM MMU, when it gets that page fault, it'll look in that X-Array and see that the current state of the uh, GPA 3000H is shared. So in response to that, there's now this new KVM exit memory fault, which will exit to user space uh, to the VMM. And then the VMM, in response to that, will make sure that there's a page allocated in the memfd using a, an f allocate um, syscall. And then the uh, VMM will issue this um, uh, KVM memencrypt uh, register region uh, ioctal to tell KVM that the that that GPA is now backed by uh, a, a private memfd. And at that point, if you uh, restart the guest, then the next time it generates a page fault, the KVM MMU will be able to, to map it to 8000H without having to, to exit to, to user space. And we also have uh, the case of explicit conversions, which in the case of SMP are in the form of GHCB requests. So in that case, we don't need the KVM MMU to determine whether or not it needs to call out to user space because the guest is specifically telling us that it wants that page to be treated as a private page. And normally, uh, in, in the current SMP patches, that access, uh, that, that request is handled completely in the kernel. But uh, with UPM, uh, we have a new KVM exit, VMG exit which basically forwards that GHCB request to user space. And then user space, in response to getting that, will basically do the same thing that it does for an implicit conversion. Sure. Any reason uh, not to reuse the same and just have a flag for implicit versus explicit? Um, you mean reuse the? Uh, the exit memory fault. OK, so yeah, the, the question was, is there any reason to not to reuse the KVM exit memory fault exit instead of introducing this new KVM exit VMG exit? And uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. And that's, that's something that we've been looking at. Uh, the, the, the main reason not to do that currently is the GHCB requests can do batching. So you could have over 200 individual page state change requests. Uh, in the, the GHCB buffer, and by batching them, we get a little bit better performance. But, but yes, yeah, something I, I brought up uh, in the, uh, the LPC microconference, um, uh, we did a talk there on, on UPM, was you know, potentially adding support for batching to the KVM exit memory fault exit so that we can basically take that GHCB request and package it up into this KVM memory fault and using like a scatter gather list or something like that. And, if we do things that way, then maybe there, there could be some uh, you know, common handling between SMP and TDX if, if, if we both end up taking that approach. So yeah, that, that, that's something to, to consider there. Uh, 
Um, so, so yeah, that, that's sort of what the flow of things look like with UPM. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, pros and cons to consider. Most of the cons are sort of in uh, the user space implementation of this, uh, because now you have, uh, you know, you have the, the normal memory allocations, and then you also have this, this private FD. And if, if you're not careful to deallocate pages uh, from the private memfd in the case where you're flipping from private to shared, or deallocate from the normal memory in the case where you're flipping from shared to private, then you could eventually end up using twice as much memory. But uh, you know, sort of the, the flip side of that is if you if you do that for every single conversion, then there are some cases where allocating and deallocating frequently because pages are getting flipped frequently can cause some performance issues. Like uh, there's there's one case in OVMF where to handle uh, bounce buffering, it will flip a page to shared, do the DMA, and then flip it back to private. And it will do that um, like hundreds of times. And all of those allocations and deallocations uh, can hurt performance pretty, pretty dramatically. So th there may be potentially some balance that you, you might want to strike on the user space side, where you don't necessarily deallocate and uh, reallocate on demand, maybe you have some threshold where you know, you, you know, after a certain point, you decide that it's, it's time to discard uh, you know, pages from, from one backend that's, that are no longer being used. Um, and thank you. With that, we're at time. Oh, jeez. OK. Well, that's, that's, uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's what we're looking at currently um, with uh, UPM. And um, you know, currently, in, in version 7, we, we won't be utilizing UPM yet. but um, we're sort of working with the community to see if we can make that workable. But otherwise, um, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to stick with, with the non-UPM solution as well. So. Yeah, well, sorry for going over time on that. I should have kept better track. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, feel free to <laughs> grab me after. Uh, if, if anybody doesn't have a better question, uh, would you make like a one minute summary of the UPM discussions at Plumber so that they also get recorded for people uh, who don't have to W. Uh, if anybody doesn't have a better question, that is more on top of the door. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, the summary was basically, uh, yeah, so it wasn't necessarily the UPM implementation as it exists today. Uh, except in in the case we, we did mention the uh, the uh, batching support for uh, KVM exit memory fault. Uh, I think uh, some folks from Google there uh, were sort of interested in that solution, so that we don't have multiple different sorts of implementations that need to be done in in, in user space. Um, but there's a couple questions around things like uh, how to deal with the kernel direct map. I mentioned that we split it currently for SMP, and I think for TDX, there's similar requirements where they may need to split the direct map. So maybe that's something that UPM could potentially address as well. Um, and yeah, I think those, those are the main ones, but yeah. <coughs>